Feeding time, Click drove to the thing behind the glass. When it heard her voice, it unfolded its fleshy body from the tight ball it had curled in and clambered to its feet. It was too tall to unfold to its full height. Instead, it crouched against the ceiling, still at least three times as tall as her. She saw the pudgy flesh draw taut to steel as it stretched out its four limbs. It may have lacked an exoskeleton, but it didn't lack strength under all that skin. Finally, the thing decided to turn and greet her. Two predatory pinpointer eyes pierced straight into hers. She didn't spray any fear scent this time. This twice daily interaction had become routine for both of them. Instead, she squeezed out a tube of pale green nutritional paste onto a tray and passed it into the little feeding box between her and the thing's cell. Closing and locking her side with a press of a button, she then unlocked and opened the thing's side with another. The thing squatted down and, with a single meaty digit, pulled the tray across the floor to its rumbling stomach. She stood and watched it eat, making sure it stayed well fed. Not that she wanted to see that unnatural jaw unhinged and wet, salivating lips smack into the paste. It was a revolting, savage way to eat. But Dro was a ship drone, and she did as the Ship Queen commanded. Since the Ship Queen had hatched her, Dro had been taught that the Ship Queen only ever ordered the good of the ship. This specimen would fetch the ship a mountain of credits if they got it to the auction intact and healthy, a payout large enough to get Dro a mate and a ship of her own. That was certainly a great good, and she focused on that dreamy future rather than the disgusting tongue licking the plate clean. She almost pitied the thing. It had no idea where it was going or what future lay in store for it. It would end up the prize of some private collector, or a prime specimen for a medical laboratory, or the star attraction at a xenological zoo, constantly poked, prodded, exposed and observed for the rest of his natural life. But with her own fortune in mind, Dro dismissed such dismal thoughts. Shouldn't have been walking around alone at night and making yourself an easy target for a tranquilizer dart, she muttered. The thing, having finished his meal, stared dumbly at her. Well, if you can't understand me, she continued, then maybe you deserve your fate, you stupid beast. It gently nudged the tray against its door to the feeding box, just like Dro had trained it. She pressed the button to open the feeding box on the thing's side, clicking impatiently for the creature to slide the tray in. A flurry of movement was all her compound eyes saw. Only once a warm, fleshy hand grabbed her by the throat did she realize something had gone horribly wrong. The tray she'd given the thing had jammed the outer door of the feeding box up and open. Before she could knock it clear, she found herself smashed against the glass wall, yanked in by the thing's vice-like grip. She feebly reached for the button to close the thing's feeding box door, but another hand struck at her wrist and directed it towards a different button, the one that opened the thing's cage. The automatic systems reacted at the speed of light to unauthorized cell access. Instantly, the corridor was dunked in a bath of red light, an alarm shrieked overhead as the glass slid open. The thing finally released her with a shove to the deck and withdrew its arms to the feeding box. It stepped down into the corridor and lifted its head. For the first time in a long time, it could stand fully erect. She heard something pop from the back of his neck, his low voice growled with approval. Dro laid on the floor at his feet, petrified. He looked down upon the ship drone as disdainfully as the queen of all queens. Dro was no longer a civilized, intelligent creature. She was a terrified insect, every biological impulse and instinct telling her to run. This was no longer a ship. All she saw was a metal jungle, with the beast let loose. She was terrified to see death on his grinning face. She imagined the sickening crunch of her exoskeleton, those glistening white teeth gnawing on her body. Her mineral was clicked frantically with remorse. I didn't mean it, I swear. Please, don't kill me. Her manibals fell listless. She realised how futile it was to plead for forgiveness with something that couldn't understand her. She drew her last bated breath and prepared for the end. But instead of making her his lunch, the thing gave her a tight-lipped nod. She saw for the first time the intelligent spark in his eyes, not the predator. This nod was not the gratitude of a beast for the one who kept it fed. This was the acknowledgement, begrudging, perhaps, of one person for another. It stepped over her and strode towards the latch. The creature studied the hatch closely and tried out the buttons on the wall panel beside it, all of which had been disabled because of its unauthorized feature. Dro reached for her calm, claws quivering with fright. She had to warn the ship queen. But then Dro had a thought she'd never had before, a thought more terrifying than the death she had just nearly felt. Maybe the good of her ship was not worth the price someone else would have to pay. Reluctantly, she put down her comm and watched 
as the creature tugged at the manual override lever. The hatch swung open, leaving the rest of the ship for it to explore. Still, there would be no escape for it. Not now. Not light years from its home. Drony hoped her ship queen would be as forgiving as the thing. <laughs>